Well, hey, my name is William Lawson, and welcome back to the Saxophone Factory. Uh, <clears throat> we are back on the trail. Rubank Advanced Method Volume 1, uh, Unit 7. Strangely enough, Unit 7 starts on page 7. Uh, exercises number 11 and 13. They are both uh, messing around in the key of A minor. Both harmonic, melodic, and natural. Here we go. Number 11, page 7, Rubank Elementary Method Volume 1. Ready? And... Now, one of the things <clears throat> that I think is important, uh, and, and, and thanks to my saxophone teacher at, at university, so there, we can sort of double up our practice by playing some of these exercises, not so sterilely, but try to play them as musically as possible. Let me give you an example here. Same exercise, number 11. Change the articulation. That's something that we, that's something that we should really be doing a lot more of, especially when we're practicing our scales or or exercises that are scalar, like this. One more time. Or something different. Just in order to, to expand the level of practice, when we're talk, talking about it. So now we're talking about the notes, now we're talking about the rhythms and articulations, speed, crescendos, decrescendos, uh, expression. We can all just sort of put that all into one thing. Because most of the time, we don't have a lot of time to practice stuff. So we need to find ways to make our practice more effective. All right, number 13. Number 13. Thirds. Like going up, you might crescendo, and then coming down, you may de you might de crescendo, right? You might change the articulation. Something like that, right? That way we can maximize as much as we can the time that we have to practice. Now we're going to go on to the next place, which is um, page 25, number 7. Now, this etude is long, so you might want to learn it in sections. It's, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 lines. So you might want to learn two lines at a time. And then sort of put it together. I'm going to try to play the whole thing for you, hopefully without error. I'll do my best. If I make a small error, you won't hold it against me. What, will you? Will you? Yeah, you will. I know y'all. <laughs> let's see. Uh, it says Allegro, but I'm going to take this a little down to make sure that I can get through the whole thing, and that way you can hear it. One, go.
Unit 7, page 25, number 7. Now, you're going to get to do that again in Unit 8. So don't get freaked out about it. Get most of it. It is in 6-8, which, again, a reminder, 6 counts in a measure. 8th note gets one count. One of the things that I'd, I'd, I'd like to make sure that you, that, that you know, that it has some C to B transitions there, we would never do it like that. What you're going to do is play, this is your B, and if you add this key right here, the, the middle side key, that's your alternate fingering for your C, and that's a much more efficient way to play that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try to go on to the next one. Page 46, number, make sure I get this right, number 6. All right, page 46, number 6, same key in the same time, sig time signature. Now it says tempo da tarantella, which means that a tarantella is a dance. So it's going to be a little bit more active. The thing about this one is it doesn't have any, any accidentals. So you should be able to get through it pretty easily. And of course, you'll forgive me if I make a few errors. Will you not? Will you? Eh, maybe. I doubt it. Here we go. Page 46, number 6, unit 7. The Rubank Advanced Volume 1. Again, thank you. Uh, we're going to go on to, uh, what's the next one? Page 54, number 17 and 18. Yeah, these fingering exercises, everybody hates. But they're really good at developing, developing, you know, certain techniques that when you need them in, you need them in music, you need them in a piece or an exercise or an etude, they're right there for you. Okay, so we're at page 54, number 15 and 16. Is that what it is? Let me let me make my um, my helper screen a little bit more helpful. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, there it is. Page 15 and uh, excuse me, uh, page 54, numbers 15 and 16. There we go. Now in page in, in, in exercise 15, it says retain the G sharp fingering. And all that means is to hold it down. While you're doing everything else, while you're playing the F sharp, you can leave the G, G, the G sharp fingering down. You don't have to twist them back and forth like this. You can leave the G sharp fingering down as you play the F sharp, like this. Right? You, you can leave that down. So we're going to try that. Number 15, not too fast. One, two. Yeah. As a matter of fact, for the, you can leave it down for the entire exercise. You can leave it down. You can, you can press the G-sharp key and you never have to lift it up. You never have to switch back and forth. So a lot of times we get in trouble because we're trying to switch back and forth. And the horn is designed that you don't have to do that. I'll do that one more time. And you do not have to switch. Number 16, requires a little switching there, but not much. 
Here we go. Same tempo. One, two, ready, go. Now on 16, you're going to have to lift it up. So you can't keep it down. So if you go slowly enough, as you practice these, and it tells you to start these slowly and increase in rapidity <laughs> and rapidness um, as you go. Here we go. Number 16 from page 54. This is unit 7, Rubank uh, Advanced Method for Saxophone, Volume 1. Here we go. Ready? Go. <laughs> thing is to practice it slowly so you get it nice and clean because in the beginning you're going to get other notes in it it's going to go blah 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 and we don't want that we want so when you're doing it and you're getting other notes you know exactly what i'm talking about right i figured you did all right uh let's go on to page 61 number six i think that we are we are talking about grace notes here. It was a long time before I realized that there was more, more than one kind of grace notes, right? There are long grace notes and short grace notes. This first this, this, this exercise has to do with the long grace notes. Now, it, generally speaking, long grace notes just divide the note in half. For instance, if you look at number uh, number six, the first section, you have uh, a long grace note. And you can tell it's a long grace note because it doesn't have a slash through the the stem. Let me see if I can, I can make this more obvious. Hang on a second. There we go. You see here? You see how there's... A half note here is a grace note. There you go, sorry. A half note is a grace note, and there's no stem. So what happens is we just divide that up into two pieces. Here we have a quarter note with no slash through the, th through the stem, and we just divide that up into two quarter notes both times. Same thing with the eighth note, and the same thing with the sixteenth notes. Now, on this particular one here, we have a, a, a half note and long, long grace note here. So we have a half note first and the grace note. I mean, and the, and, and, and the, and the ending, ending note here. Same thing here, quarter note. And what's left is the second part of beat two and the rest of it. Here we have an eighth note here first. So the eighth note comes first, and then the long part, and then the end. There you go. Now it takes a little bit to get used to. Let me flip you around here. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it, but when you start noticing it and you start practicing it, it makes it a lot easier. I promise. All right, we're gonna do the first one. The first one on page sixty-one. Get your book. Page sixty-one is a long grace note on a whole note. And that means we just take those two, that D grace note, and the C, and we divide it in half. So we have two half notes. That's all it is. Ready? Go. The second set are long grace notes with a, with a quarter note and then a half note. The third are an eighth, a long eighth note grace note on a quarter note. You just divide them up, so you now you have four eighth notes. Sixteenth, sixteenth note, long grace note on a sixteenth note. So we just now we have two sixteenth notes in place of one eighth note, right? Now remember. On the uh, long grace notes, like on dotted notes, whatever the lar if it has an eighth note first, then you play the eighth note first, and then the long part of the bass note, uh, and then if or if it has a, a half note first, then you play the long part 
first and then the bass note. For instance, here we go on this particular one where we have a half note, long grace note on a dotted quarter note. Or dotted, excuse me, dotted half note, like you see there. We're going to play the long part, the half note part, part first. Now, if it had a quarter note first, it'd be... Okay. Here, on the next section, on the 2-4 section, we have a quarter note and a dotted quarter note, the long quarter note grace note. So the, the, the quarter note is first, and then the bass note. If the eighth note is first, we have the eighth note first. There you go. Make sure you look over this carefully, page 61 in the uh, Rubank Advanced Method for Saxophone, Volume 1. And really get into it. Now we're going to play some of the extra, some of the exercises here as we go on, to sort of continue to illuminate this. But it's very, very important because a lot of times we're playing in ensembles and we're playing in bands, and we see this, we don't really know what to do. And everybody treats every grace note as if it were fast, as if it was. And a lot of times it's not which will make some things easier. All right, let's see here. Page 66, number two. I think we've done that already, but we're going to do it again. I haven't seen you in a bit. Yeah, it's, it's the Chance and Trist by Tchaikovsky. I think I did this, and then I got a copyright notice. Hopefully, I won't get a copyright notice this time. If I do, then we'll challenge it. This piece is well over 100 years old. So we'll see. Tchaikovsky has been dead for a bit. He's been dead for a minute. I don't think that he cares if I play it on saxophone. Here we go. Uh, page 66, number two.
All right. That was uh, page 66, number two, um, from unit seven, from the Rubank Elementary Method, excuse me, Rubank Advanced Method, volume one. I hope it was helpful that, you had a, that now you have a reference copy to go by in your practice. I, I am going to try my best to get as much of this stuff done before the, if the first semester of this school year ends. It's been crazy here. It's been super busy. I've got two other channels that I'm doing, so some of y'all know. Uh, my, my, own my own channel and then my wife's channel, too, so I'm crazy busy. I'm working two jobs, so please forgive me if I'm not Johnny on the spot here, getting these out, getting these out in, in a proper amount of time. But the more you watch them, the more you share them uh, with your friends and, and the like, the more successful the, the, the channel has, uh, has an opportunity to become. And uh, we need uh, 4,000 hours of, of view time. So if you can share this with as many people as you can, that would make it a lot easier for that to happen. Anyway, I got to get out of here and make it for somebody else. So until we see you again, keep practicing.